What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this issue, we are jumping into the epic conclusion of War for Earth 3. This issue will be closing out everything that has been going on with the Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller, the Crime Syndicate, and Teen Titans Academy. Everything that has been building since the Infinite Frontier has begun, it all comes to an end right here this day. Rick Flagg and his Rebel Suicide Squad against Amanda Waller and her Justice League. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with this event, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into the finale, we are picking up on Earth 3. And currently, Ultraman, he is just watching everything unfold. Amanda Waller made him a promise that he wouldn't have to do anything. He would just be the god ruler above all. Amanda Waller taking care of the day-to-day, -day, taking care of any nuisances, if you will. Those nuisances include the Rebel Suicide Squad, enlisting the help of Teen Titans, as well as the Flash. They are trying with great effort to win this war. Even with Ultraman out of the picture, they are still having a hard time staying above water. With the battle raging on, we see Calabra, who has been a ghost. This really hasn't been explained either. She kind of just came back as a ghost. But being a ghost, she is able to possess people. We see her possess our Green Lantern, taking him over and charging full speed at Ultraman. All he does is stick out his arm, and Calabra is shot out of the body. The thing is though, Ultraman's not jumping in this fight. He is simply just walking through, and anybody that gets in his way, he's just pushing them away. Seeing this as mere insects fighting, he has no want or need to join into this. Meanwhile, Amanda Waller watching all of this unfold. This is where we see the Bat Pack. Now these guys are from Teen Titans Academy. They had snuck on the ship of the Teen Titans. I guess you could just call them Titans now. Because they are the teachers. They are the mentors. They came here trying to put a stop to Amanda Waller. With her turning around and seeing the teenest of teens. She can't help but laugh hysterically. While all of this was going on. Harley Quinn and Mirror Master. They snuck into Amanda Waller's plants. Taking the head of Yorick, and Yorick's really hard to explain if you haven't been keeping up with the Suicide Squad, but Yorick really is just kind of a, a random character that has been brought in that has advanced technology and advanced intelligence to do everything that Amanda Waller needs. As they sit here and discuss where Ultraman may be, because they want to keep eyes on him. If he decides to join this fight, it will be over in a matter of seconds. This is where Yorick's head turns on, not really understanding what is going on here. We pick back up with Amanda Waller watching out the window, and Deadshot takes a shot at her. With Parker stepping in front of her, Parker takes the bullet. With him going down, Amanda Waller, she initiates a very, a very cruel and horrible tactic. And the off chance that Deadshot decided that he wanted to switch sides, to go against her. While the bomb in his head may not be active, the bomb in Talon's head, it definitely is. To teach them all a lesson, she detonates the head of Talon. Moreover, she has taken Deadshot's brother from all over the multiverse, having his body on the outside of this building, multiple versions all along the glass. This is a human shield that she has built up, and so if Deadshot doesn't decide to continue to work for her, every single version of his brother will die. At the Fortress of Solitude, we have Peacemaker, Ambush Bug, and Donna Troy of Earth 3. This Fortress of Solitude, it belongs to Superwoman. With her hating Ultraman as much as them right now, she came up here to get the Phantom Projector, only for Johnny Quick to steal it out from underneath them. Canary had knocked down the fortress, and Superwoman is the only thing keeping them alive right now. Peacemaker trying to wake up Ambush Bug, having some dialogue that ticks off Superwoman. She drops everything she has, and she takes off. 
ambush bug able to teleport them out just in the nick of time. Taking us down to hell, we have Brainiac Ectragon 666 imprisoning Match and Nocturna down here. This isn't really prison for them because now they just get to be together. Amanda Waller has come down to hell because she has a proposition for them. With Peacekeeper, Rick Flag, and Ambush Bug all meeting back up and knowing the location of Ultraman, they want to go pay him a visit. With him currently at the zoo, they have gone to have a conversation. And as he sees them roll it up with guns he tells them like no you can't do anything right like if, if i snap my fingers you guys are gonna die what rick flag has come here to do is convince ultraman to go against amanda waller telling ultraman that he has been manipulated you call yourself a god you see yourself as the king of this planet but the truth is you are just a puppet amanda waller she is doing everything the truth is amanda waller she has been manipulating you she is currently just keeping you out of the way for whatever plan she actually has divulging that that plan is to seal this planet off from the rest of the multiverse Seeing the plans firsthand, he asks Ultraman, how do you not see that you are her superhuman puppet? And he's really not trying to offend him. Rick Flag is simply letting him know that he has been that puppet as well. Ultraman in a fit of fury. He uses his heat vision and he demolishes tons of giraffes and zoo animals. Not really sure if this was the best of ideas. It is the only thing Rick Flag can think of to take down Amanda Waller. And that's what takes us to Waller's HQ. With the Titans and the Rebel Suicide Squad working together, they have now confronted Amanda Waller. With Deadshot, Match, Nocturna all by her side, this is not the only individuals they have. Having Yorick's body here, it is still operating. Exposing the Bat Pack. Nightwing pleading with her not to hurt these kids. But Amanda Waller has no intention of doing that. Saying that the only thing she ever wanted to do was keep people safe. And so if everybody comes inside, they will teleport them all back to their world. It will be free and clear. There is no catches, no obligations. Just go home. Unfortunately for Amanda Waller, it's not going to be that simple. With Ultraman carrying half of a freaking skyscraper, he is livid. Now, of course, this isn't what Rick Flag wanted, though you really can't expect much different when you have a psychopathic Superman and you tell him that he is nothing more than a puppet to some regular person. With everyone rushing inside, they are doing their best to get everyone teleported out. And Nightwing really doesn't want to leave, but those kids are their first priority. Getting them to safety is all that matters. Rick Flag telling her that she tries to keep people safe, yes, but you do it by all means possible. There is nothing morally or ethically right about what you are doing. Matt's trying to let them know to just hear her out. Rick Flag proclaiming what could she possibly say? What she could possibly tell him that would make him change his mind about everything that has happened here. Amanda Waller exposing that she has the Phantom Projector. She always was going to double cross Ultraman. And while she says she was going to do this regardless because he's a monster, Rick Flag refuses to accept that she is somehow the good guy in all of this. That it doesn't work this way. You don't get to play hero all of a sudden. And he just doesn't trust her. Amanda Waller saying that yes, she has done horrible things. And none of it, everything she has done was never enough. But she truly does believe that she can save Earth 3. These people on this planet. And the first step is stopping Ultraman. Asking Rick Flag if he will team up with them this one last time. And even Nightwing chimes in. Letting him know that he really does get it. Your mentor disappointed you. Went way too far over and over. But is today about today? And at this point, Rick Flag, he truly does feel like he's just losing his mind. Like, how can nobody else see what I am seeing? After everything she has done, everything she has manipulated, all of the deaths and the lives that she has taken to achieve this goal. And you guys are going to sit back and say, well, she's the lesser of two evils. And so he takes that phantom projector and he smashes it on the ground. Not trusting her, not trusting the situation, not knowing what the inevitable outcome would be. He's not taking chances. 
and with Ultraman ripping down these walls, exposing Amanda Waller as he is about to take her out. This is where we see the arrival of Superwoman, knocking him across the face, letting him know how disgusted she is with him, becoming Amanda Waller's puppet, letting her take everything from them that they have built. He was supposed to be a god, but he is nothing more than a man. As the two titans have their battle raging across the city, this gave them the window, an opportunity for Yorick to try and get the Phantom Projector back online. Amanda Waller telling them to turn the teleporters back online as soon as possible because she is getting out of here. Our heroes, of course, they cannot leave everyone in this world to this destruction. With Ambush Bug and Mirror Master going after Ultraman. The two of them flinging him from mirror to teleportation. From the bottom of the sea to a volcano to the moon. This is only going to slow him down temporarily. This gives them the opportunity to try to fix the Phantom Projector. Connecting Yorick's head back to his body, this gives him the ability to figure out how to solve this problem. As our Rebel Suicide Squad, they move in on Ultraman, he is throwing up Kryptonite. Indulging in too much of it, he is starting to get into a weakened state, hoping that this would be their chance, their opportunity. Everyone makes a move on him, but no one is able to touch him. With the projector fixed and powered up by the lantern, we see it turned on and Ultraman is sucked into it, begging for Superwoman to help him out. Telling him he is pathetic, she watches as he gets sucked into this puck. And so while the battle against Ultraman has been completed, Rick Flag is going to lead the crime syndicate with the keys, hoping that they will rebuild to make it better. And Amanda Waller, she is MIA, with Talon and Calabra being ghosts. They're trying to figure out what they're gonna do next, and this is where Amanda Waller teleports back in. Match coming in and protecting her, taking Rick Flag's gun and breaking it in half. The Rebel Suicide Squad, the Titans, the Flash, they are all being teleported out of here. And now having Ultraman captured and encapsulated more or less, they are using him as a power source. Because what Yorick has been building is a way to disconnect them from the multiverse. Having Ultraman trapped inside of this, using him as a battery, they now have the capability to do so. And with the press of a button, just like that, Earth 3 vanished adrift the multiverse cosmos. With Match now putting on the cape, this is everything Amanda Waller had promised him. A new world, a new opportunity, a real chance to forge their own identities. Not only that, if Amanda Waller steps out of line, they will be here to stop her. As we see Amanda Waller's Justice League made up of the Emerald Knight, Ectragon Brainiac 666, Superwoman, Match, Johnny Quick, Nocturna, and Canary. Just like that, Amanda Waller won. And that will be the end of this story. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, I really didn't think they were going to go this far. I didn't think they were going to let Amanda Waller win. And while this is a little bit different than the future state event we had seen, the outcome was still the same. Amanda Waller has isolated all of Earth 3 because she knows the great darkness, it is coming for all of them. Hoping by isolating this planet, she will be able to keep it away from what is about to, to unfold in the Omniverse. But I really have enjoyed this event. The way that they have portrayed Ultraman, I really do enjoy because he seems like the more egotistical, just full of himself, looks at everybody like they're beneath him. And that hubris is what essentially got him defeated. It was surprising how many people really just got on board with Amanda Waller. It was really like, you know, we're already at this point, we might as well finish it. And Rick Flag is the only one being the real voice of reason in all of it. At the end of the day, none of it mattered though. She outplayed every single one of them. And while not everything went according to plan, everything panned out exactly as she wanted it to. The question now, how does all of this play into what is about to happen? With the Dark Crisis, the death of the Justice League, the Great Darkness making its arrival. Is Earth 3 going to stay hidden? 
Is it going to be the last safe haven for all of humanity? Or is the great darkness going to find them? Will they be the first victim to what comes next? But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always donate by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. If you can't do that, do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.